I call this project Moments Forgotten. It is a piece that I created out of copies of the letters that my father wrote to my mother during World War II. I made a little booklet and am storing it inside this tin. In this particular video, we'll be looking at how I prepared the tin to hold the project. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel and that notification bell, of course, lets you know when I upload additional content. This is a tin that I started with and I am sanding it down with, I use both a coarse sandpaper and then graduate to a finer sandpaper to create a texture that the paste that I'm going to be utilizing to rust, give the tin a rust effect, will adhere to it. The Gooby Gone I'm just utilizing to remove any stickiness from the labels that were located on the sides of the tin to hold it shut. Uh, I received gifts in this over the holidays, so it is something that I've hung on to, thinking it might come in handy. This is a rust texture paste effect that I purchased from um, Finn and Bear, I think is how you pronounce a company. I'm not exactly sure, but it comes in a couple of different configurations. I'm going to take a look at a couple of them and then make my decision on which color combination I'm going to use. But I think it's kind of important to keep them together so, because they were designed to create an effect. So the first color in this set is a brown, the second is a mustardy yellow light color, and the third is an iron, like an iron oxide. So that is the first set. The second set has some um, different looking patina with it in the three colors that, that it comes with. And you can see they're Similar, but, but slightly different. So you have that dark base. You have a bit of green, which would give that verde rust look. And again, the just the um, mustardy color. So I think that I shall utilize the one with the green. And I have this piece of copper that you can see that I've laid on the tin. And it is out of remnants from the jewelry side of my workshop. I had textured this piece of copper some time ago. It was a larger piece, and I cut off and used what I, what I wanted. And um, I think I'm going to use this to decorate this tin. Now, to get started, I will be utilizing just a complete layer of black gesso. And I'm putting that down with a paintbrush, and I'm going to cover the inside and the outside of this tin until it is completely black. There's the lid finish. I'm going to get the outside first, and then I'll allow that to dry and come back and paint the inside of the tin. And the gesso dries pretty fast on it, and where I scratch this tin up, it's taking the gesso quite well. So I'm going to set that aside and let it dry, and I am going to work with what I have chosen to, to put on the outside to adorn the box, if you will. And I have a couple of, of just random little pieces that I pulled out of the scraps from my jewelry side of, of my workshop. And I have taken this and marked where I want to adhere that. I'm putting a brad through it to hold a little clock, top, clock type arm on it. And I have drilled a hole in the copper to allow me a spot to attach that brad to. And I just took this to my drill, drill press 
and drilled the hole with that. And it is, the, that brad's coming through kind of tough, so I'm pulling it through with my pliers. So I, now I have the four pieces attached together. I have this strip of copper that has been embossed or um, put through a rolling mill for relief. I have a um, just a piece of sterling silver and copper that I have drilled a hole in the center of and pulled that brad through to attach the little clock arm. And now I have these little pieces, and these are plastic, and they're like plastic, little plastic gears. And I am going to adhere those with some glitter glue onto the top of the box. And what you see down there in the lower left corner of the box is a little flower that I thought was a good idea. It turns out that it is not. So I am going to just show you the mistake that I made. I'm going to glue that on and we will gesso over the top of all of this. And in reality, this does not work and I replace it with something else, but you might as well stick with me through through my failures. I'm just hurrying that glue along with a little heat tool. And I think that's looking nice. So I'm just kind of trying to determine where else I might might put things. The copper I'm not going to paint. So now I'm going to start back with uh, that texture paste and try to start making this rust effect and I am just working around those gears that I have glued on and just applying where where I feel like it's going to look nice. I think that this is kind of up to your own determination and what you think will look good but I'm just dabbing and rubbing and kind of getting on there as organically as I possibly can. And I think it's starting to, of course, look much better. And, you know, the whole purpose of laying that black gesso down first was to create that background. So when I sand a little bit of this off or go back over the top of it, there's that black gesso underneath. And I do want some of the tin to show too. So I will be sanding it down to show a little bit of that silver tin as well. Now I'm just taking it over the sides. And the inside I'm going to leave just completely black. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a coat right now. And then I'll set this aside and, and allow it to dry. I just really like the coverage that that black gesso, it, it just goes on so nice and smooth and looks much better than trying to get a, an acrylic paint on something, I think. 
So I'm going to set that aside and allow it to dry. And now I'm going to attach the copper piece. So I have taken two pieces of copper wire over to my jewelry bench and with a torch flame beaded up the end of it. So I can utilize it as a head pin, if you will. So I've drilled holes on each end of this copper piece and drilled holes directly through the top of the tin as well. So there is a hole in the copper piece and a hole in the tin. I'm pulling that head pin that I created out of those two strings of copper through and the head of that pin will hold this copper piece in place and I am just tightly um, tying it together or twisting it together on the bottom side of this lid. And there I've pulled off that little flower and and um, I've pulled off that little flower that we talked about earlier and I'm going to put a little small washer there which I think looks significantly better than than that flower did. And once again, this is something that you have to put on, put on to your liking. My, the way I'm doing it may not be the way you would do it. And I am just dabbing it and kind of painting it on where I feel like those, that color might have rusted and, and shown through. And the first texture paste was was thicker, and they they kind of get thinner as you progress in color. So this one was slightly thinner than the other. I'm just tightening up that um, copper wire on the inside. I have twisted it together, and now I'm taking, um, you know, a piece of pliers or a tool and just twisting that wire to tighten it, putting some kinks in it to tighten it, if you will. Okay, I think I have that securely fastened now. And now we're going to Tear that last little, little flower off and admit defeat. And I have a washer that, that I am going to adhere there. So I just went with a rusted washer. And now for the final, final color in this set. And this is what gives it that little patina look, this final, final coat. And this will be the lightest of the three colors that I put on, or the least. And it's starting to look like an old rusted box. Or at least it's starting to look like something you might have dug up out of your yard. I'm just going to speed up the drying once again with that heat tool. And now I'm coming back, now that it is dry, I'm going to come back with a fine grade of sandpaper and, and just rough it up again. Take, take some of it off, expose the tin in some places, and just work with that until it meets a visual appeal to my eye. 
I'm just rubbing it with a baby wipe to get all the dust off of it so I can truly see what I what I have here. And I think it needs a few more spots coated. And now where I have that um, copper wire adhered, I'm covering that up with a piece of duct tape. It's black duct tape. And then we'll cover that as well. But I just want to get rid of anything that might be sharp or sticky or poke through. So I'm covering that with a black, a black duct tape. Just going to measure and determine what size I need to cut my cloth to go down inside there. And I'm going to cover the inside of the top of this tin with some fabric that I have stained, coffee and tea stained. And again, I'm just coming back and adding some dimension to it with, with a little bit of sanding. So it's starting, <laughs> I stumble over my words, it's starting to take shape. And I have this canvas that I have stained with coffee and tea. So I am cutting it to the size that I need to fit down inside this box. And I'm going to work with it a little bit until I'm sure that it is just the right size to glue in. So I'm just trimming the edges off and then we'll come back and fray them up a little bit to make them look a little more rustic. I would love to just tear it, but I couldn't get it, couldn't get it torn. So that fits in there nicely now, and it's just creating a collage. I have a bunch of bits and pieces laying around that, that I want to use this piece of lace. I'm going to pull out some of the letters that I copied and just tear them where I can get just the cancellation marks that have the date on it, some of my father's handwriting, which I think always adds a personalized touch and just different things. And I am just creating some bits and pieces and I'll work with those until they fall into an appropriate collage. And that's kind of what my experience is with collaging. I just have to play with it and play with it. Bringing in yet another piece, which is a tea bag that, that I have left over. And I will just fidget and fuss until it appeals to me. I'm just inking up around some of those papers that I cut to give them a little more of a distressed look. I like to work a lot in odd numbers, so I'm always thoughtful of how many pieces I have. And for me, for some reason, it's working in threes and fives and sevens always seems to look a little better to me than, than twos and fours and sixes, if that makes sense. I'm just going to hit this with some glitter glue. The mix of 
PVA glue and water just didn't seem to be holding it real well, so I'm going back with a little firmer glue. And this holds very nicely. I think I'm going to use the Fabric Fusion here as it is fabric to fabric, and I think that will work a little bit better than the glitter glue or the PVA and water mixture. Get that down and it adhered well, and then we'll start putting everything else in place. So I'm, I'm using three different types of glue here. So I've used a glue that is designed for fabrics. I've used a glitter glue, which has a really quick, firm hold. And I've used my own made-up Mod Podge, which is half Elmer's glue and half water, or a consistency similar to that. I just mix it until it, it works well. This is just a little bucket of rusted pieces, little found objects that I come across. I've raided my husband's shop for washers and other little rusted bits that, that ha are, were laying around in his shop. So anything I find, I throw in, in a little tub. I think all of us are a little bit of the collectors of the odd items. And once I get this collaged, that will pretty much finish the inside of this. And we'll call it finished. And the next video, we'll be working on putting that booklet together to fit down inside it. And I will also have um, a video, the scroll that I made to go inside. So I hope you will come back and join me for the other sections of this project. But this is the tin that I distressed and rusted and created to hold the little booklet that I made. So this is the inside and of the tin and the booklet that I was that I made to hold down inside it. I think it it turned out very interesting. And I hope you find it that way as well. I did put a piece of lace in the bottom of that. So once again, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate those of you that have already gone ahead and subscribed to my channel. And thank you for coming back and watching additional videos. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I have put a link to the walkthrough of the finished project up above. Bye for now.